Ladies and gents, muggles of all ages, um, this is Tom. And, um, <clears throat> well, for those of you who don't know, we sadly, very sadly, lost um, Michael Gambon this week, or last week. Um, Sir Michael Gambon, as he refused to be called. <laughs> um, but he was, um, um, he was our Dumbledore. Crikey, I promised myself I wasn't going to get emotional through this. But um, anyway, I wrote a few words about my experiences with him. And I thought rather than um, just texting them, it'd be better to hear them out loud. Because then maybe I can bring some context to it. I haven't actually read it since I've, <laughs> since I've written it. So um, you can bear with me if you can. Um, we are also raising money for Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital right now um michael was a um a huge advocate of well the arts um his 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 love for the um the fun of being a kid <laughs> i think which starts me off and um bear with me because it's uh, it's a short three stories but they are the ones that suck out in my head so I hope this gives you some context to what um, Michael meant to me. Sir Michael. <laughs> I'm taking the piss. He hated to be called Sir Michael. Um, just what Michael was enough for him. <laughs> Michael was a man impossible to forget. Despite being one of, if not the oldest cast member on set, he was by far the youngest in spirit. Just as crew were shouting, Quiet on set! Quiet on set! Seconds before the first assistant director, Jamie Christopher, who sadly passed away recently too, he would shout... Right, radio's off! We'd wait. We'd hear nothing. Roll sound! A few seconds of absolute silence. Hundreds of people in the studio, but just silence. And then the sound crew would respond. Headphones on. Sound speeding! Then Jamie Christopher would say, OK! Roll cameras! Everyone is still. <laughs> no one is barely breathing <laughs> in fear that this would um, ruin a take, which back in those days, kids, we used to use film. <laughs> so every single second that it was rolling that was um, not used was money down, the, money down the drain. Anyway, okay, roll cameras! Everyone is still. This is one of the first scenes I shot with Michael. In the few seconds it took for the film cameras to get up to operating speed, it sounds like... Whilst the hundred plus crew members were utterly silent, Michael would turn to you and whisper, Hey, come here, come here. Who am I playing again? <laughs> um, I didn't have time to react before hearing and action. Michael instantly and effortlessly transformed into the wonderfully warm Dumbledore we all know and love. He was disarmingly charming with his playfulness and incredibly cheeky, <laughs> where he could get away with it. And he got away with it. <laughs> uh, excuse me. A masterclass of acting followed the words, action. And almost as soon as the director yelled, cut, he would start telling the same joke <laughs> or anecdote. Definitely not suitable for a teenager. I can speak for all of the cast and crew when I say 
we <laughs> loved it. <laughs> um, right. The two resounding memories I have of Michael are being in the hair and makeup chair early morning, most mornings. Um, getting my hair blonded and slicked. <laughs> and hearing Michael pull up for work. You see, every cast member had a driver. Not because we were divas, but, <laughs> but because it was insisted we had drivers for safety, punctuality, and on more than one occasion to wake me up and get me in the car on time. <laughs> Michael, however, insisted on driving himself. He was a hugely passionate man about lots of things, but machinery and engineering especially. From antique shotguns to brand spanking new cars. Fast cars. He also liked to park... <laughs> he also liked to park right out front of the entrance of door five, where every cast and crew member had to enter to get into the studio. Often, I would hear the revving engine of his Ferrari 308 whilst I had foils in my hair, turning it blonde. <laughs> um, one day, he brought in a brand new Audi R8. I leapt out of my chair, mid-bleached <laughs> mid hair being slicked back to marvel at what he called his new toy. He clambered out of the car, immediately threw me the keys and said, take it for a spin. I didn't know what to say. I caught the keys and then I just stood there. <laughs> I didn't know if he was joking, but I wasn't going to wait to ask. <laughs> he held the door open for me and moved the seat forward so I could reach the pedals. This is when the assistant directors started to panic <laughs> and insisted I did not take it out for a spin. I was 14 at the time, <laughs> or 15, one of the two. Michael scoffed at the health and safety ruling, as he often did with his charm. So compromised to at least let me start the engine. The ADs, assistant directors, watching very nervously as he let me fire up my first supercar. It was. Incredible. <laughs> I will never forget it. Michael smiling as much as I was. He kept saying, rev the engine, it sounds beautiful. Once again, the AD stepped in and insisted that I'd had my fun and it was time for me to go back to hair and makeup to finish off the blonde do. I thanked Michael and in classic form he joked, oh piss off, you can take it for a spin when they're not looking. <laughs> with a trademark wink. That was a great day, and there were many more cars he brought over the years, and he loved sharing them with myself and anyone else interested. He was a very, very generous man. Now, the memory that really stands out the most of Michael... <laughs> is the time he more or less stopped filming entirely after a few takes. Um, it was my first scene working with him alone. It was in the Half-Blood Prince. It was when Draco was attempting to do the deed. Um, and for the life of me, I could not remember my lines. I only had three. <laughs> But I had put so much pressure on myself and um, I was so nervous about working with who I now knew, Michael Gambon, <laughs> who he was. I was shitting myself, for lack of a better um, phrase. But, um, but he stopped filming. He said, can we just stop for a second? After a few takes, where for the life of me, I could not remember my lines. He made it seem as if he needed a break. 
<laughs> I'm. <laughs> yeah. This is how bad the lines got. I'm pretty sure I said <sighs> Snape was going to kill me at one point. Snape was never going to kill me. <laughs> that wasn't in the script. I don't know why I said that. After three failed attempts, he asked the director if he could have a breath of fresh air. Which is Michael Gambon's language for a cigarette. He gave me a friendly yet firm double side nod. Something like that. Telling me to come with him. I presumed he wanted to have a stern word with me outside the studio before continuing. About learning my lines. Oh, this is what I thought at the time. He never felt the need to talk or tell a story for the sake of it. He picked his moment and in hindsight did so beautifully well. <laughs> He offered me a cigarette, then lit it for me. Sixty seconds of silence followed before I couldn't resist any longer. Uh, he never welcomed an apology. That was what I gave him. I'm just, I'm so sorry, Michael. Michael, I, 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 I promised you I've... I've I've learned the lines. I um I've rehearsed them meticulously. I, I'm just a bit nervous, <laughs> to be honest. And 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 the more I get it wrong, the more I doubt that I'm the right man for the job. And I don't know. Shh. He didn't even say shush. He he hushed me with his cigarette held hand. <sighs> he puffed his cigarette twice. With no answer. Then stared at me with very serious eyes. I panicked. Tom. Do you have any idea how much they pay me to be here each day to play this Dumbledore? Uh, um... No, no, not, not really, was my reply. Well, if you keep this up, I'll be able to buy a new Ferrari by tomorrow. He did smirk slightly, but from where I was standing, I didn't know if he was joking <laughs> or not. At the peak of my wondering... He'd have a wink and a cheeky smile that only Dumbledore could do. We finished our cigarette. <laughs> the next take. The next take recorded was the one used in the film. Over the years, I've received many lovely comments about that scene how Draco's journey was flipped on its head just based on the few words I exchanged with Dumbledore. That was thank you to Michael. I'm glad I read it out and not just posted it. Sir Michael Gambon, or just Michael, as he would rather be known as, um, thank you. And um, sending my love to all his family and fans and friends. And uh, yeah, raise your wands. I've probably got about 10 of them in there somewhere, but what's this? I think this was a fan wand, but raise your wands. He was a national treasure. Lots of love.